It's January 2024. It's midwinter in Brittany on the west coast of France, an area that's well known for taking the brunt of some wild Atlantic weather. And we're in Brest for the start of what some are describing as the most extreme race in offshore sailing, the Archaea Ultime Challenge. A new solo non-stop race around the world in 32 meter long foiling trimarans. A fleet race with L-teams has never been done before, and perhaps for very good reason. There are very few people in the world that have ever considered taking this on. In fact, only four people have ever achieved a non-stop lap of the planet in a multi-hull. So what is the Archaea L-team challenge? It's simple. One lap of the planet starting and finishing here in Brest. One boat per team and one sailor on each and there are six teams competing. Simple, except of course it's not. The route is 24,000 miles heading east via the Cape of Good Hope and Cape Horn and 60% of the course is in the infamous Southern Ocean. It's a race of endurance but also a highly tactical one. So what is an L team? In short it's a 32 meter long trimaran. There are a set of rules within which teams can create their custom machines, but broadly speaking, an old team is 32 metres long, 23 metres wide and weighs 16 tonnes. And the modern ones, like Bank Popular 11, fly on hydrofoils. Typically they cruise at between 30 and 40 knots, and in perfect conditions, Bank Populaire has exceeded 50 knots. They are, quite simply, exceptional machines and to handle them alone is beyond comprehension. But that's also true for solo circumnavigations. When Sir Robin Knox Johnson made history in 1969 by winning the first ever solo race around the world, the Sunday Times Golden Globe race, he did so after 312 days at sea. The current record for a solo lap of the planet under sail is 42 days, 16 hours and 40 minutes. I'll say that again. 312 days in 1969, today 42 and a half days. Even more incredible is that this solar record is only one and a half days slower than the fully crewed one. That's how much things have moved on. Given the current records, you might think there's little chance of anyone going any quicker. Especially because when these records were set, teams have been waiting for the perfect conditions to slingshot them on their way. The six teams that are taking part in this race were not going to have that luxury. Their start date was set for the 7th of January. But we also know that in the last few years these 32 metre trimarans have come a long way. Not least of all they can rise up on hydrofoils and achieve staggering new speeds. We also know that the pressure of a race at any level often delivers another level of performance from the competitors. And it's for these reasons, among others, that this race has attracted so much interest. Armel Leclerc is one of the favourites for the race. Not only is he one of the most experienced skippers, but Bank Populaire 11 is one of the newest L teams. He's no stranger to racing around the world alone. He's been on the podium in three Vendée Globe races and won it in 2017. A victory that also still stands as the fastest solo monohull around the world at just over 74 days. But what has drawn the most attention recently was winning the double-handed Transat Jacques Vab in Bank Populaire. Not only was this an impressive achievement, but it also says much about the performance of his boat. In fact, he's the reason we've come to Brest. Armel has been a Musto ambassador for 15 years and Musto were keen for us to come and talk to him before he set off. So we did. You are no stranger to sailing around the world on your own. You've done it the Vendée Globe three times. Yes. Won it in 2017. The record still stands. Yes. So you're no stranger to that. How different is doing it in this? This is very difficult to um, to manage this boat alone because the boat is very uh, big and, and when the wind is uh, more uh, strong if you don't change uh, the different um, sails or, uh, you can be in danger. So um, 
first uh, difficulty and uh, second is um, is the speed of the boat because uh, it is a flying boat with uh, when you have a uh, 15 uh, knots knots uh, wind you can fly and so you you have a uh, 30 uh, knot speed so um, it change uh, the capacity of your boat to to cross the Atlantic or to cross the different oceans so you change uh, very uh, quickly uh, the, the different uh, system forecast uh, weather system forecast so um, you need to have um, capacity to to prepare the next step and to use the boat so uh, uh, you need to have experience and and this experience is very important yes give us an idea of how you live on board. What, what's your watch system? What kind, how often do you sleep and, and for how long do you sleep and how does your watch system work? My uh, uh, day on Bon Populaire is um, a classic day is um, when I am alone <coughs> I have um, some time to, to sleep so it's, it's not a long, uh, long sleeping so just um, between 20 and um, 40, 50 minutes, and uh, several times in in, a, in one day. So uh, I have a buzzer and um, and uh, and watch. So I can uh, put that and and I am uh, on my uh, bed uh, just uh, here. Uh, it's not the same as that at home, but uh, <laughs> it's very comfortable. And um, I can put some alarms on the different uh, problem you can have on on your on your way so you can have a, a collision um, or the wind is changing and um, a lot of time it's in the cockpit because uh, um, I have a, a seat um, and I can uh, see the different uh, captor of the boat uh, we have uh, we have uh, 200 captor on the boat so <laughs> we have a long uh, many 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 uh, numbers and many many uh, information, but it's very important. So I can, like um, a pilot of a plane, you have a lot of things you need to do all the day, all the day, and um, and when you have some time to, to to sleep, you can you need to sleep. Yes. As speeds have increased in the offshore world, clothing has changed too. The ability to move more freely may sound obvious, but with sailors spending an increasing amount of time below decks yet still needing to work outside in difficult conditions, developing the right clothing has been a big challenge. Sailing around the world will take our mail through an extreme range of conditions, from freezing cold and staggeringly wet to unbearably hot. Broadly speaking, our mail's musto clothing consists of the following. In the tropics, he'll wear a sunblock dynamic short sleeve top and Gore-Tex shorts. As conditions get colder, he then moves to an HPX Merino base layer long sleeve top and a Gore-Tex Infinium Primaloft mid layer salopette. Then for outer layers, he uses the HPX Gore-Tex Pro Ocean Smock and Ocean Racer boots. Yes, yeah, the, the, the clothes have, have changed um, during the last uh, 10 years. Um, when I arrive, uh, the, when we prepare the uh, the, my second Vendée Globe with the Banque Populaire team and the uh, Imoca um, it was um, <laughs> a water boat <laughs> when you are um, on the deck you have uh, millions of, li of liters of water on, on your body so you need to have a, um, uh, good protection because uh, a lot of time you are weight and so it's not comfortable, so um, uh, and the um, and the clothes were very were heavy. So when you come back in your in your boat, um, you ch you are change you change, and so for that Musto was the best one because uh, they have the um, technical clothes. Uh, we, we can you can do a a, a race like a Vendée Globe, and. With the evolution of the boat, um, now we have a lot of time in the uh, the cabin, the cabin crew, and in the cockpit, 
and um, and now with the ultim you have not the problem of the water <laughs> uh, just with um, with the wind and the, uh, but you need now uh, to to have a lot of time with physical movement so you need to have some uh, clothes we are technical uh, adapt for that so now uh, with the um, evolution of the speed of the boat uh, we have another um, problem it's um, the impact if you have um, a speed you are in 35 or 40 knots and you have a, a, a bad bad speed with a big wave uh, if you have uh, not no protection on your body you can uh, hurt you so I have um, we have developed with Musto some different protection like that on on this one. <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, different things on the, uh, on my jacket. Uh. So what about the machine? Bank Populaire is the latest of her generation and she's not only impressive but incredibly complex. Logistics manager Erwan Steff gave us a tour. Here you've got like a, your gymnastic place, you've got your house, you've got your, yeah, you've got more or less a house only here, in the four, four square meters, that's where he's gonna live. He, he will not go down downstairs because there is nothing except the technical parts, but he's gonna live here. So here is like uh, the main, main part because nothing is like electrical, mm. it's all by hand. So there's only two things that it trickles, it's like autopilots and also the water maker. Mm. Otherwise you have to work with this. This is a trim from the dagger board, plus negative. And so they are sitting here and you put your seat here between the two things here and you just like trim here. Really? And that yes. dagger board is, and that is the ride height? Yes, exactly. Plus you go more up, down, you go down. Right. As yeah. simple as that. Yeah, exactly. Here you've got your office to work. So uh, if you want to work, it's going to be here. Here you've got your kitchen. And uh, here you've got all your communication system over there. And here you've got your bed. That's your, that's your bedroom here. And the food is already ready here. There's a lot of jelly babies in there already. Actually. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> this is a day six, and he's got everything on his back for a day. Oh, that's right. It's a day six, yeah. Right. The man, the machine, and the mission. Armel Lecliache's campaign to win this unique race is a fascinating story. But as the six competitors knew only too well as the clock counted down to the start, planning, preparation, and previous records count for a lot. But a race of this type played out at the staggering speeds that these incredible machines are famous for. The Arkea Ultimate Challenge would be a step into the unknown for all.